Joe Hortiz had his final talk with the media yesterday before the draft next week, and there are a lot of interesting takeaways about trades and what they've done in free agency thus far and how it affects how they draft and who they might pick. So make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content. It helps me out so much. And let's start off with what they've done in free agency and if that affects their draft. I don't think it does. What the goal is, is to add depth right and and add great players at every position but you don't want to turn away from a good player because you signed someone and I, th I think if you look at the history that I've been a part of we've we've done that you know I think if you look back we signed Marcus Williams in Baltimore and then we turned around and took Kyle Hamilton in the same draft and so I think it's important to, to con if you get a chance to get great players, you take them. So he was asked specifically about the J.K. Dobbins signing that just happened and if that affects whether or not they're going to draft a running back. Obviously, it does not. He even brought up that example of signing Marcus Williams, who was kind of a big money free agent signing for the Ravens at the time. And then they went out and drafted a first round safety in Kyle Hamilton. It does not affect the draft strategy because you're always going to be looking to improve your team in all areas at all times of the year. He is not going to not sign J.K. Dobbins because he expects to draft a running back. And he isn't going to not draft a running back because he did sign J.K. Dobbins. He brings in two running backs in free agency and the draft, and then you let the best man win the job or just let them compete for who gets the most playing time because running back is a position where we're going to have multiple guys getting touches every single game, and they're basically going to be giving it to whoever has the hot hand at any given moment. Kind of similar to the wide receiver and the tight end position as well. We're going to have multiple guys that contribute to this offense at both of those positions and at tight end. We've added two guys in free agency, just like we've added two running backs in free agency. And then, you know, also Ben Mason, who is a hybrid, but really he's kind of like a fullback, right? But I've been saying for over a month now that the signing of Will Disley and Hayden Hurst, it's not going to stop them from taking Brock Bowers if that is their guy. And now Joe Hortiz is basically confirming that to be true. Now the wide receiver position, they haven't added anybody yet in free agency, but they did bring a couple guys in for visits and Tyler Boyd, Marquez Valdez Scantling, and now DJ Chark just recently all came in for a visit. So if what they are looking for in a wide receiver in free agency, which kind of feel like it's the size and the speed and also the ability to play as a slot wide receiver, if that is consistent with what they want to draft in a wide receiver, then I think in a trade down scenario, you could look at wide receivers like Troy Franklin from Oregon. He's big and he is fast. Brian Thomas Jr., same kind of thing, tall and fast. And if they stay at five, I think obviously Malik Neighbors checks all of those boxes. He's got the positional versatility. He's got the speed, really, really explosive. The size, he's six foot. And what he can do after the catch is so dynamic that I think Joe Hortiz might actually have Malik Neighbors over Marvin Harrison Jr. just because of what he says he likes in wide receivers. But we don't know for sure because what if Marvin Harrison Jr. is such a great wide receiver that he's the outlier that you pick because you're so confident that he is a generational talent. We just don't know right now. Joe Hortiz was asked if Jim Harbaugh would be okay with picking a rival like Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State. And he said, yeah, obviously that's not going to play a factor into whether or not we draft a guy. If he's a rival from Michigan, they're going to draft the best player available no matter what. And that is a sentiment that he said multiple times, best player available. Now, some people still don't think that Jim Harbaugh would be drafting a wide receiver in the first round. But the final say actually goes to Joe Hortiz. And that's something that Jim Harbaugh and Joe Hortiz said in their introductory press conferences that Jim Harbaugh is going to be Batman during the regular season. Joe Hortiz is Batman during the offseason. So he has the final say. And yes, I understand Joe Hortiz is going to draft guys that his coaches want. And it's a collaborative process with every single coach and every single scout having say in who is getting selected. But with Joe Hortiz having the final say and the Ravens picking a wide receiver in the first round in the past three of their five drafts, I think it's crazy to say that just because Jim Harbaugh is the coach that they are going to ignore the best player available, which will be a wide receiver and not an offensive lineman. I mean, even Jim Harbaugh wanted to draft a wide receiver when it was best player available in his first year in San Francisco. He wanted to draft Julio Jones and 
Thanks again to Charlie on Twitter for showing me this because I think this is actually really significant to note. But with all of that being said, hear from Joe Hortiz himself about wide receivers in this year's class. Wide receiver is going to be a deep position in the draft every year. It's just the way the game has evolved and changed. It's a passing game. The offensive line is a really deep draft to this year. You can find talent at any level, at any round, at all positions. I don't place the increased importance on any position other than obviously the quarterback position. I think wide outs are important. I think running backs are important. And I think offensive line is important. Tight ends in this offense, tight ends are important. We have always followed back, fallen back in Baltimore to the best player available. And that's what we're going to do here in LA, you know, and uh, we're going to take the best player available because every position is important to help win. So this is a very like political answer, right? But he is correct here by saying every single position is important, but it's worth noting that he's not saying wide receiver is less valuable in Jim Harbaugh's style of football because he doesn't believe in the forward pass or something. I mean, every position is important and that includes wide receiver. Now that doesn't mean that he's going to pick a wide receiver over any other position. It just means that he's going to look at his board and view every position objectively without any sort of bias towards one or the other. And he's going to pick whoever he deems to be the best player and the best value. Best player available at five. It's going to be a wide receiver. I cannot see them picking an offensive line there. If they stay at that pick, I could see Brock Bowers. That might shock a lot of people, but I would much rather trade down and pick Brock Bowers. And speaking of a trade down, Listen to Joe Hortiz talk about that possibility. I've had communication, conversations, nothing's concrete right now. We believe, and I think Coach mentioned, we actually have the first pick if the run of quarterbacks go. So um, so people all have called about interest in coming up to us. Um, and uh, I've had conversations, but I think, I think we'll have conversations through this week. I've had them already this week. We'll have them through the weekend, through next week, and then on draft day that's when it'll really pick up so a lot of teams have been calling and talking about potential trades with the chargers and this is nothing new i mean we all kind of knew that this was likely happening a couple nfl reporters have been hearing that people around the league believe that quarterbacks could go one through four and that would give the chargers the first overall pick for a non-quarterback but if that doesn't happen and they are at five with the cardinals sticking and taking their wide receiver one Teams like the Giants, the Vikings, and the Broncos, they could even trade up for that fourth quarterback that's probably going to be J.J. McCarthy for the fifth overall pick. In that scenario, it's going to take a lot for the Chargers to move down, though, because Jim Harbaugh really believes that J.J. McCarthy is going to be a franchise quarterback. So if he is there, the Chargers are going to engage in trade talks with the belief that they're giving away a franchise quarterback, but also because of what Joe Horty said when he was asked what it would take for him to trade down. We've gotten a nice result in picks and, and value. Um, and that's gonna be the reason, because there's really good players, uh, great players that we're gonna be staring at. They have to make it attractive for us to move away from those players. You know, the whole, it's a fair trade, it's a wash. I don't think that's a, a trade that we're interested in. So in order to move down from five, Joe Hortiz is not interested in a fair trade. He wants to clearly win that trade. He wants more value because it's either going to be the first non-quarterback selection or it's going to be a franchise quarterback. So he's talking up this pick very highly so that he can get a haul. And if he doesn't get it, He's totally fine with taking a great wide receiver in Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. I think that he's just talking up the value of this pick in order to get more in a trade down scenario because it's been talked about for a while now how much he does value draft picks and how he might want to trade down and pick up more draft capital for this year. But he also, he, he doesn't need to trade down in the first round. I mean, what if they love Mike Sandristill? This is just a guy I'm throwing out there. What if they love Mike Sandristill? and they trade down in the second round because, say, some wide receivers are sliding, some offensive linemen are sliding down the board, and a bunch of other teams want to trade up to that spot in order to take one of those guys that is falling out of the first round, and the Chargers feel confident that they can get their guy, which is Mike Samristo, let's just say, about 15 picks later. We know how much he loves draft picks. He doesn't need to trade down out of the first round could trade down in the second round, could trade down in the third, the fourth, or whatever, and get more draft picks in this year while doing that, 
but also get more draft picks for next year. But there are a couple other things that he said that I think are worth noting. Uh, he said that they know Michigan players better than everyone, so they have a lot of good intel on those guys, obviously because of Jim Harbaugh. Talked about some day three prospects and emphasized that the traits and the specific strengths that a prospect has, it's going to lead them to draft a player. They like athleticism a lot, and they're going to be betting on their coaches to develop that talent that they bring in. So look for some raw talent and athletic players in day three. I also would expect the special team's ability to play a big factor there. He wouldn't comment on if he wanted to add some more offensive linemen, but he said, look, if we have five starters on the offensive line and I have the ability to pick up another starter, I am going to do that. And the reason for that is like, look, injuries happen. And also any chance that I have to make this team better, make this roster better, I'm going to take it. He also talked about some interior defensive linemen, said they want both a two-gap run stopper as well as a pass rusher on the interior. He also said that they're going to be looking to add depth at every single position because they're trying to build up that 90-man roster for training camp. They want to get as much competition at every single position as they possibly can. And then another thing that's really interesting to note here is when he was talking about interior defensive linemen, he said he likes size, he likes length a lot but they don't need to be a very big player they need to play big if you just look at who they drafted in the first round they drafted tyler linderbaum i know he's a center he's on the offensive side of the ball but he's playing in that same gap you have an undersized center that you drafted in the first round because he plays big turned out to be a good pick for the ravens interior defensive linemen this year like jerzon newton and byron murphy both of those guys are undersized but they play big, they have explosive hands, they bring a lot of pass rush. And I think, you know, if the Chargers trade down 23, they could pick a guy like Byron Murphy or Jerzon Newton if he slides down there. So that is everything that you need to know from the Joe Hortiz press conference. And if you did not see my video yesterday, the Chargers just signed J.K. Dobbins, and this means a little bit more than you probably think. 